the draft, and it's really hard to play against a team composition that relies so much on disengage and picks. What about the battleground choice? Is there a good battleground for Poland maybe to choose to really thwart and shut down their playstyle? Not sure. Definitely not mm. towers. Towers is really yeah. good for yeah. the playstyle. Yeah, no, absolutely. I don't think they need to pick a battleground. I think they just need to be willing to sacrifice a ban on either the Stitches mm. or the Falstad or even the Brightwing. Well, it looks like the Polish team did choose the battleground and they're going to Braxis. Bulldog. That is okay. going to be our battleground for game number two. Are you happy with that choice? It's quite brawly. It's a situation this map, the combo can work, but if they wanted to go for the same one, but now Poland are expecting it, I doubt we'll see a repeat performance. But either way, it's still, like I said, quite a brawly map. It's going to be much harder for Germany to try and avoid team fights on this map. Yeah, absolutely. It's very lane focused and you have to match up against your opponent. And that's something that I really do think Poland should be comfortable doing. I mean, we labeled Poland as one of the strongest teams when it comes to individual class and mechanical skill. However, in that first game, we saw some unusual mistakes, not just by Gugus on that Rhaegar, but also sometimes by Mana on the positioning on the Chromie. Do you yeah. think they can work on those issues during a series? I think it's definitely something that it just takes a little bit of refocusing sometimes. sometimes there are players, obviously, who will struggle to recover from something like that. But if you can refocus yourself and just know that was your issue, that can be a big help. And can I just, we didn't really shout it out as much. Brightwing in yeah. that last series, not just for the Emerald Winds, for the combo, not just for the Polymorphs all the time, but Ice Block, such a simple tool that can make such a huge deal, dodging Chrome abilities, dodging Leoric a lot of times. Beautiful play. Yeah, not just the ice block, the positioning as a whole. Like, Nunia was always where his team needed him to be. To drop Emerald Winds, not just think he was too far forward, yep. but the ice blocks. Yeah. Now. And not just to really combo and follow up on the Stitches hooks, but also when it came to interrupting Mosh Pits. I think Zadun on that ETC must have felt very frustrated. Absolutely. I mean, Zadun is a player that is in this tournament landed fantastic mosh pits almost consistently. He landed a four-man mosh pit and a five-man mosh pit in the same game once. But this time, he got no value out of it. Mm. And what a swing of favor we are wow. seeing right now in the community votes down below. 75% of you guys out there are dropping a hashtag DE win. But if there are Polish fans out there and you want to support your team mentally, hey, let us know in the chat right now. Hashtag PL win is the way to go. Yeah, I mean, we would have thought it'd be the other way around. We start off with the first pick being Lieutenant Morales as the first pick bakery. Yeah, that's uh, that's interesting. Yeah. I mean, she's definitely a solid pick and it On is much especially. harder to punish her, especially in lane. But once you go past the laning phase, I actually have quite a hard time playing Lieutenant Morales on this map. Like, it really depends on who she is comboed with. We've seen a lot of players try to just gain control of the bot lane with an auto attacker. Like, it's infinite sustain is what you're looking for. So maybe the return of Gul'dan is what we will be seeing in this. Yeah, and already we see a good ban coming in here from Team Germany as well in order to keep pressure away from the Lieutenant Morales. Genji is definitely here that exactly. is quite the bane, but not just Morales. We talked about it earlier as well. Keeping your solo laner safe against potential Genji gangs is very important. The return of the Dragon Gnome and the Cow coming in straight <laughs> yeah. away. And ETC, of course, one of the best engaged heroes. Great for punishing heroes like the Morales if she ever gets out of position. Yep, definitely. And ETC is a hero that also forces Morales to step forward because he yep. can go on that frontliner or he can go on that backliner. And once Morales does step forward, he can W them both away from each other, cancelling that hill. And once again, we have no cleanse coming in here. Mm. Now, Morales can self-cleanse if she wanted to go for the medevac. It will get her out of that temporal loop if she times it right. Otherwise, temporal loop will actually interrupt the casting animation of the medevac, and that can be disastrous if you are a Morales. Now, this kind of forces Germany. If they want to go for a second support, they have to pick it now. Otherwise, like, Brightwing could possibly be the ideal one here. Maybe Rhaegar. That's a lot of healing output but you need to pick it now, otherwise you could be choked out here and maybe be forced into Uther, Mora uh, Uther Morales. They don't though, they go for Zagara and Johanna. Yeah, Zagara picked up a comp that looks very much like Team Fans so far. The yeah. Johanna potential solo tank, which I am of course slightly worried about. So we're talking about stuff from Team France. What are your thoughts on the potential Sergeant Hammer to come in with the Morales? Now, obviously it has issues versus Chromie, but 
Morales armor potentially could be a way to deal with it. You, you are right. Like, with the Lieutenant Morales, it is very strong, but against Chromie, I think that might just be a bit too much. It's three stacks, is what it is for <laughs> Chromie. Just like, oh, a stationary target for me to continue to see, John. How lovely. In the meantime, though, I really think that Team Germany is working on a solid draft here, taking yeah. strengths from other teams, implementing it into their own playstyle. Just really look to bat on paper, and we see a cool Dan ban. Actually, surprises yeah. me a little bit. I mean, he would have been fine with Germany's comp. Mm. Uh, cool Dan Morales, we already know it worked yeah. very well together. It's the infinite sustain. And they just remove it out here as Germany removing out the Stukov here. Stukov is always a dangerous hero to face on practice, especially with ETC as well. Stationary that fights. Combo. Exactly. So then, final three picks. Two of them having to be done now from Team Poland. They still need to support. Probably some other source of damage. Chromia, uh, she does a lot of damage in one go, but if the enemy team is able to play around her, she can have issues. Yeah, the consistent damage on Chromia is, of course, a bit low, and that is always an issue against Medic. Yeah. Medic, infinite sustain, basically. Infinite sustain and burst protection with her armor. So in the situation of if Chrome is your only damage dealer, you're not going to get it done. So something else is required here. Now we've seen multiple playstyles of Chromie in this tournament. Sweden, for example, relying very much on the temporal loop. Mana and uh, the Polish team mostly going for the slowing sands. Which route would you prefer here in this game? So far, there's no cleanse. So I would not hate to see the temporal loop, especially now there is some more burst damage. Rhaegar with Feral Lunge, of course, and Illidan hunt onto a uh, hunt onto a target caught in the temporal loop, or even to set up for a temporal loop can it be huge. But here's some protection. Here's what they needed. It's not cleanse, but it's very interesting as the draft coming in here, and it does sort of move away from the solo tank, Johanna. I think temporal loop is actually going to be extremely strong in this game. So yeah. if it's onto Tracer, we have to remember, Tracer can try and recall, but she recalls to the exact same spot. Exactly, because the timing works out really well. You have to recall potentially very early just to get out of it if you want yeah. any chance. Definitely true. And uh, this is a very interesting composition coming in from Team Germany here. And I really got to say, the fact that Tracer's here tells us a role swap immediately. Nunez is no longer going to play on that support role. He's going to be our Tracer to yeah, focus on. Fun. It is Ribby who would normally have played the Mirai, so maybe we'll see Beamcraft moving on to it here. Uh, Morales, though, can have issues with Tracer. Tracer likes to go into the backline a lot, and until later levels, Morales, her healing beam does not have the most range. Yeah, no, it definitely does not. But at the same time, this is a very similar combination right. to the Mafiorian Tracer I was speaking about earlier. Tracer goes in, trades, goes back, gets yep. healed all the way to full, and then does it again and again. And she does have the shield. She's going to be getting that Zarya shield whenever it is off cooldown, basically, to keep her alive. On the other side, though, double support on the Illidan, both of which have cleanse to potentially help against the Johanna in this case. Yeah, I'm, I'm not 100% sold on the Illidan so far, but when you do pair it with a support yeah. like Rhaegar, who can give it that Ancestral, and Brightwing, who can give that spell armor, and also teleport possibly in on the Illidan with a huge Emerald Wind, yeah. the playmaking potential is very high. We have, however, seen that what the issue can be of Zarya versus an Illidan. If it's played well, it can be a huge counter here. Speaking of counters, how many good Illidan counters on the side of Team Germany do you spot? Zarya. Maybe Johanna with the blind. I think Tracer tends to be quite a good counter against an Illidan that wants to sustain the dive, but against an Illidan that wants to hunt, not it's so much. Very likely here with the amount of burst damage follow-up that we see from Poland. Yeah, absolutely. All right, gentlemen, do you think that Illidan composition has what it takes to bring back Poland on track? I'm not 100% sold, but I do think Poland are still a very strong team, and we saw at times that game how strong they were. It's just it wasn't quite the finished product. So my vote is still with Poland, but definitely a lot more lenient this time. I think Germany have a real shot. That's true. Bosca Pamienta, that previous game, they're going to want to get the win back, and I think that burst combo they have could be what they need. And I'm going to keep my Germany flag still very high, <laughs> prouder than ever before, because I think they have what it takes to deal with that Illidan. Now, game number two here between Poland and Germany on Brex's holdout. And playing for Team Poland, it is going to be Mana, Zadun, Zhuf, and in the top lane, it is going to be 
it is going to be Wolves and Gugas. In the meantime, their opponents here coming from Germany all the way with Memecraft on the Zarya. Born plays the Johanna. Minx is on that Morales, actually. And Nunia plays Tracer. Who would have thought? That How many leaves Brain Pops can you fit in one team? <laughs> yeah, that leaves Brain on that Zagara. And as you said, Brain moving from a more melee oriented role into the Zagara. And Minx for the first time playing the support. Exactly. So we're going to see some different stuff straight away. And we're also going to be seeing some aggression onto this early tower here. You can use that Zarya shield to great effect. You can see Meme yep. already stacking up on that energy. Now, some of the talents we're seeing here, Laws of Hope coming in once again. It's sort of gained popularity once we've hit the playoffs. Yeah, Nunia sticks true to his very much unique build yeah. with the Tracer rounds at level one, revealing the target Tracer is currently firing on. Also, I really like the move that Poland made here, uh, keeping themselves in the middle of the battleground so they could rotate very quickly to the lane that was pressured by Zarya. Volatile Acid coming in for the Zagara, which is hugely helping in that bot yeah. lane. As you can see, Zagara is doing her best to defend. She's managed to hold the towers at very high health, even against an Illidan, especially thanks to that Hunter Killer uh, single target damage. Zarya as well. Going for the pinpoint act, the demolition expert, sorry, pinpoint accuracy is the level yep. seven. So lots of poke damage, which at later levels has huge range and can do good poke onto that chromie. And already memecraft on that Zarya is doing so much work, absorbing shots from the towers, keeping up his energy this way, and dealing heavy, heavy damage with those hard hitting grenades, as Tetris said. Demolitions expert is the way to go. Really cool to see the deviation, the variation coming in from Zarius throughout the tournament. In the meantime, though, bottom lane is getting pressured as well with a double uh, yeah. two to one situation. But look at the health difference oh, there is. Zagara, she's, uh, the only reason she's now losing this lane so hard is because she's run out of ammo. The difference is, though, uh -oh. not only are we seeing this push continue in top lane, we also see Mana very nearly falling down. Memecraft, though, getting body blocks. Mix trying to move in to get that healing beam. Not required though, Memecraft able to tank his way through. Now it is moving on to Born here, who gets the healing beam. Nunia though, look at the position, straight yeah. into the background. Just sure if she had her melee cooldown, that would have been a kill. And no level seven either, so no parting gift. And what are you gonna do against the Morales when she keeps everybody alive? You focus, focus uh, her down, excuse focus me. Focus Morales. There we go. We do see Poland taking a little bit of control of that top lane. Brightwing was forced up here though, and as such, the push in bot lane has been slowed severely. Yeah, definitely true, but Illidan gets a couple of tools available as he levels Ooh. up to all this own against the yeah. Oh, 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 oh. That blast, though, very close. And the bronze talent for good measure onto Memecraft. Yeah, he, yeah, Nunia definitely needs to get out of harm's way right now. <laughs> yeah. He can no longer continue the fight. In the meantime, some funky plays here by Wolves on that Illidan, and he's been doing a fantastic job at keeping Zagara confined into her own base. Which is fine, Scar has gone for single target lane domination here. Volatile Acid to take control of the lane as Nunia forces everyone away. And the Zerg comes out for Team Poland. Germany not able to stop that at all. But Zagara also going for that Envenomed Spine, I believe the name of the talent is. Yeah. Uh, and he's able to push in. I will double check that because I'm starting to think that's an app for talent. I was right. No, I was, yeah, I was right. It's Envenomed Spine. It's all on me. Well done, Tetra. I'm proud well of you. Me. Great moves. Keep it up. Yeah, we did it. As we see Wolves moving forward, but able to dart straight back over the board to make it so he did not get yeah. caught out. And look at the speed barrier, providing Tracer with even more mobility when it comes to defending and engaging on squishy targets yeah. in the backside. Hard hitting Dragon's Breath here on Nunia. He needs to be really cautious. The Sh Zarya shield hitting a little bit too late here. Zagara is currently pushing up against Brightwing in the top lane. Brightwing not the best at stopping that push. Yep. Memecraft gets a lovely oh. empty, but beautiful move there. There's the recall, and we do see Tracer able to get out. Now watch Minx's energy bar. He's dropping dangerously low, so Morales is going to have to take a quick break and yep. basically not heal any oh, other hero. Grenade. Yep. Grenades definitely are going to have to land. Speaking Kicking. of grenades. <laughs> <laughs> Jinx, Mr. Kendrick's wish. As we do see... Zagara has her push also halted a little bit in the top lane due to the fact that right, uh, the rest of the team were already pulling back. Do you have a saying if in, in English if you and a fellow commentator or a friend or whatever say the same thing at the same time? Jinx. You say jinx? You say jinx and that means they are... I can't remember what the ruling is. It's a children's game, basically. Yeah. You want to you wanna know what German people say? What do you say? Chips cola. Chips cola? Yeah. That's just what you order at a restaurant. Yeah. Uh, hey, if you're, if you're <laughs> in the US, maybe. Uh, but yeah, oh, you say chips cola. Oh, yeah, I want, I want some chips and cola sometimes. I wouldn't mind it right now, exactly. to be honest. Right now, 
that is domination by Poland in the early game. Oh my god. Yeah, this is a completely different game if you compare it to the previous one. No longer has Germany all the tools available to play shenanigans and, you know, rotate around, get stitches, hooks, and isolate people. Exactly. On Brax's holdout, it's all about pushing together and defending together. And the morale is, while she's a great hero, don't get me wrong, she seems a little bit... I don't know, challenge too, too much because there's so many targets dropping low at the same time and she has only so much energy to work with. Exactly, and she needs to either land a lot of grenades, which will become easier later levels once she gets second opinion, etc. Yep. But right now, she's just purely relying on stacking up clear to get that cooldown reduction. Exactly. Once again, uh, full grenade build. A lot of people actually said that this was a re relic of the past here, ever since those talents were nerfed on Morales. But in the Nexus games, it still seems to be very popular. Indeed it does, and especially when you are against someone like an E. Oh, the for sure, yeah. Good interruption. Getting that cooldown reduction is a very big thing. Very important, especially if you opt to not go second opinion yeah. later on. You can maybe go for the damage reduction. Uh, shield removal. Shield which, removal. There's no task, but we do have, of course, right wing shield, which could be the Yeah, definitely true. So, uh, as we experience uh, a little bit of mercenary clearing here in the top lane, we focus now on Gugus on the right wing. I really want to follow Gugus a little bit more closely because we gave him a little bit of a little bit of slack in game number little one. Bit, little bit. But he set the bar very high for himself after surprising and convincing us so hard with all those good performances in the group phase. This guy, uh, we see Zarya here very politely asking the enemies to hit her, taking <laughs> that damage absorb absorption, giving more energy, which can. With, even though you're not going for pinpoint accuracy, still oh. a great damage output, but Tracer gets punished. This time, Nunia did have the recall available, and Minx might be the next person to follow yeah. soon here. Minx is wondering why he's yeah. that little 10, dodging the <laughs> Dragon's Breath here, but he's really just delaying the inevitable here. He was trying to stop Chromie gaining one more stack, but she gets it. And if there's one person that doesn't say, hit me, it is Morales. Yeah, please, please <laughs> stop hitting me. It's the exact <laughs> opposite of what Zarya wants. <laughs> exactly true. So, Germany definitely looking a little bit shaky in this time around, and the Polish team is turning it up quite seriously. Like you said, Poland so dominant in this early game. It was a similar. Poland were also winning in the last game as well. Difference is Germany were getting comeback kills, and yeah. they were not so far behind. Now to stay full level behind, and no comeback kills yet are to be seen. And we talked about temporal loop potentially getting a lot of value against heroes like Morales, for example. Yeah. But Mana sticks true to his guns. He comes in with the slowing stance once again. Probably because beacon control is just so important here and it is so easily done if you have the AoE zoning from slowing stance. So you can see a bit of an issue of Illidan yep. versus Tracer, where if he tries to dive her and Tracer blinks away, he will follow. And that can lead to quite disastrous yeah. moves. But Save for Rega. Yeah, but this time we saw Wolves able to dash back and not put himself in danger. There is the hunt though. And ETC is holding his level 10 up to this point. And I would have actually loved to see stage dive in game number one from Zadu. I'm really not sure why he didn't go for it, because those mosh pit attempts look very, very helpless. Tracer able to use a recall to escape Zadun there. Right wing hovering in the bot lane. Look at this, she's not actually pushing against the Gara, at least consistently. Mm. She's just hovering around, making sure no one goes for the steal and racing to see if she's needed up top lane. Yeah, and that's the beauty of Braxis Holder. You don't need to team fight all the time. As long as you make sure that the channeling process yep. is going to continue, the Zerg meter is going to fill up, you're in for one hell of a right. And with those Zergs spawning from the top wave, Team Poland is already in a perfect position. Oh yes, Team Poland. They are in a good position here. There is still a fort up here, so this is not game over for Germany, or at least to keep going down. However, depending on how aggressive the push uh, push comes in here, this could be disastrous if Germany lose members. All right, Memecraft trying to destroy a couple of those banelings with his uh, Zarya body. Volsi now goes in a little bit more aggressively, and the signal has been launched for ETC. Just as Zagara was in the position as well, she very nearly got caught out, but here is the Sim going on to Tracer. She moves in trying to get the ETC. We see Wolves pushing forward, looking for Nudia. Nudia taking a lot of damage from these Guardians, actually. The slowing stance giving Mix a little bit of trouble, moving his way through to keep up with Nudia, to keep him healed. As we see Poland, now the Sim is gone, trying to make the play. Hunt is used, trying to focus this Tracer. She recalls out, and is able to escape. There's the barrier, trying to move forward onto Mana, but Wolves is going to put too much pressure. Can Tracer get a kill here? And Cecil oh, keep Wolves alive. The Ancestor was huge to keep Wolves alive, and now look at the mana bars on Team Germany. They're all out of juice here. Born 
Z uh, Zagara even, who went for the Devouring Maw at level oh. 10. So I was actually waiting for it to go down the entire team fight, but Brain unfortunately used too many other of his abilities, and he ended up being out of mana for the most of that team fight. And that could have been what they needed. They were yeah. looking for this kill potential, and they don't get it here. And once again, no comeback kills like they used in the last game. They are fighting from behind, but we saw signs of life. A yeah. good chase coming out here, and if Sagara had had that mana, who knows what would have happened. Yeah, this is definitely looking like a better team fight, or this was looking like a better team fight for Team Germany. Now, if you take a look at all the heroic abilities they brought to the table, and the heroes on top of that, we have Explosion Zone. We have the yeah. Devouring Maw. This could be an ideal composition to force a boss fight and decide it in your favor. Dude, being forced to retreat here. Nudia even going a little bit further, using that Zarya shield to maximum effectiveness as he kills off the wall. Level 13 is getting closer and yeah. closer for the Polish team. Look at the global potential from Poland. Yeah. This is how they're getting this. Both of their globals chilling up in top lane. Illidan might be required though, maybe Brightwing or uh, a little bit earlier. Illidan's actually got a run down. He does not want to use that yet. Here is the stage dive. The hunt is on. Oh. Is there. She gets out. She gets out. Thanks to the devouring boss. Stim drone is dropped. So they immediately move on to Gugas trying to take a nap at the polymorph. Is keeping Gugas alive here. But the damage is coming out from Germany. They are in control of this fight. Mix needs to stay safe, but they are able to survive that hard engage from Poland and still take down the fort. The disengaged Ma by Brain saved Minx's life and kept Germany in the game here. Otherwise, if Morales yeah. had fallen, they would have snowballed so heavily. Team Poland, that is. Vindicated is what that talent pick is now. Beautiful play by Brain as they move into the top play to take down those Goliaths just in time for the Beacons to be spawned. But this, as a reminder, was a level 12 versus 11 fight. Poland did not have level 13 when that fight had started. Exactly, and the Beacons are going to get activated very, very shortly. The level 13 advantage is going to be huge for Team Poland. Top lane already under control. Keep in mind, all those globals are going to yep. be back very, very shortly. I do like the adjustment of Brain. The fact is, Illidan and Brightwing would be killing him, potentially even EGC a lot if yep. he was split pushing. So the fact he has to save his team means the XP will continue to be in Poland's favor. But the team fight potential is looking okay. They can at least control one and just continue to soak and push. Okay, when is Team Poland going to pull the trigger? When are they going in? Looks like the Dune is going for the backline once more. There's the hunt again. Zarya shield, expulsion zone, keeping him alive. And the expulsion zone pushes back. Wolves, Mix is still alive. Finally, Illidan is able to track him down though, but Nunia has been causing a little bit of havoc in the backline, but he is run out of health as well. Another Zarya shield though, at best keeping Gugas alive. The fact is that yep. was the fight Poland were looking for. No more healing available once Mami Morales bit the dust. And that's exactly how Team Poland wants to initiate a team fight. So much pressure on the Morales, followed up by a beautiful uh, collapse basically on her. The Maw, unfortunately, though, this time not as efficient yeah. as it was. It was an empty air Maw. And no Stim Drone no. either. They weren't able to drop the counter damage. Tracer was yep. not in position for that. And as such, we're going to see a 100% Zerg wave and a boss, which will actually be, as long as they can keep holding these beacons, timed very well together. Yeah, we talked about Germany being very good at those boss battles, potentially with the Expulsion Zone and the Devouring Maw, but when both of those heroes don't have their Rooks ready or yeah. are flat out dead, it is a good moment for Team Poland to capitalize it and steal the Archangel. Boss in the top lane, Zerg uh -oh. moving into the bot lane as we see multiple lanes of pressure, and this is where Sigara is like, oh. Oh, I really wish I had Nidus. As you <laughs> yeah. see Wolf pushing in with the rest of his team, the Zerg being completely abandoned, which Johanna is being forced to abandon that bot lane as well, because the boss does too much damage. Team Poland is paving the way for the mighty Archangel in the top lane. In the meantime, Zergs are keeping Zagara yeah. occupied, ironically, in the bottom lane. As there's the hunt once again on Morales. Expulsion zone. Zones away ETC. Obviously, Mix is still alive. He drops the Stim Drone because he might die. He's able to stay alive, though. That's a big deal. Astudia continues to rain damage. But look at the health bars of Poland. This damage output from oh. Tracer is nothing. And she gets taken out here. Now the focus on to Minecraft. His shield has expired. The Morales healing will keep him alive. But this is a 3v5 right now because the Gara is still defending bot lane. Team Poland is steamrolling over the Germans here. They're taking their core only an Emerald win here to really buy a lot of time. Gugas having a much better game this time around compared to the previous, and it is GG for Team Poland. A three-level lead, clean and crisp. That's exactly how you tie out a series.
a comfortable game by Team Poland there from the start to the finish in a dominant fashion. Only really struggling thanks to what didn't really result in, I don't think, any kills. A defensive more and expulsion zone combo just to save Morales? Yeah. When you're in that situation, you're not getting kills from those heroics as well. You know that you're on the back foot, and unless you can land that one Wombo, you have no chance. And in this case, the Wombo wasn't enough. Tracer was doing nothing against that team. And we talked about, did Team Germany have enough ill encounters? And you guys said, you know, kind of, but not really convincing. What about now, Bakery? No. no, no <laughs> not really. Um, yeah, Poland executing not too well in the early game, but they always had the stronger comp, and you could tell they knew that. They played it slow, they ramped up more and more, and as my replays show, actually, they got stronger as the game went on. So, the first replay I have for you guys is actually going to be that initial engage where it didn't quite work out for them, and they all got a huge amount of value. So we play it forward, we see Bremen already teleporting. Now look at Chromie W, it goes down, but Emerald Wind pushes the Morales out. And now the Maul comes out, gets the two, and somehow Medic lives. Medic <laughs> lives from that engage, which is absolutely insane. Um, and this is why Germany was still in the game. Um, both teams end up disengaging, no kills happen, but definitely a win for Germany here. They are still, however, once again, from three kills to zero, they burned all, but they burned all their heroics to save Morales. When you have to burn five heroics to save one hero, is that worth? Probably, honestly. When, when it's Morales, it's probably worth it. Yeah. But the second replay I have for you is when it goes well for Team Poland. So as we roll it forward, we're going to see um, the stage time is going to come in again. But this time they say, let's not take Brightwing with us. Let's not have the Emerald Wind. Instead, let's take the Illidan. So now the Chromie combo lands. Almost one shots Morales and now look at Illidan, so they peel so well, and they're trying so hard, but sadly Illidan is just far too persistent. He keeps chasing, he finally gets to Morales, and now Germany are in an absolutely terrible position. Nunia getting super, super low, Zagara getting low on the top side as well, and Sestor comes out just to save the bright wing, and this is the team fight where Germany win. From that, they get 100% Zerg wave, get the boss, and end the game. Yeah. Very, very convincing performance this time around by Team Poland. It really shows that if there is not really a whole lot of place for Germany to get those shenanigans out and not, not a lot of movement freedom for them, in a straight-up laning battle, Team Poland will have the advantage. Yeah, Team Poland were in a convincing situation in that game. Germany, we could see where they can gain advantages in games, and that was not one of them. They were once again potentially setting up for longer sustained fight with Wombos, but when you're sustained damage tracer, it's just bouncing off all the sustain of Team Poland, you're going to have a bad time. All right, guys, if you're curious to find out how this series is going to continue, well, there's only one thing to do. Stay tuned. We'll be back after a short commercial break. Don't go anywhere.